wait. Let's see who gets online first. Hey, hi, hi, Christina. How are you? Hello, hi, everybody. Hello, good, good afternoon. This it is noon in Hong Kong, and it's that time of the week again. Time to say hi to all of you. Hello, Urban Sketchers. So good to see you. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, hi, Atari 81. Eileen. Hello, Maurizio from Toronto. Oh, hello from Seattle. Well, welcome, Missing Missling Bloom from Seattle. Thank you for joining us. Olivia Wilder from Arizona. Wow, hey, hi, hello. I see so many familiar names. It's so good to see you guys. Thank you all for making time out. Oh, hi, Suhida and Rita is here, of course. Great to see you. Thank you for taking time out, for joining us with your breakfast. It could be your lunch, could be your dinner, could be tea all the way in Australasia. It's always so good to see all of you pop in and say hi. And we have some show for you today. If you have been checking out the promos, you know that we today celebrate watercolor. And it is going to be quite a show. I can assure you we have some amazing guests. We have people, we, we have two wonderful ladies from very different parts of the world, very different approaches to watercolor. And I mean, before I went digital, I also used to use watercolor and it is really quite amazing how versatile this medium is. Let's just see a show of hands. How many of you out there depend on watercolor? Like watercolor is your main thing. Watercolor is your main medium for urban sketching. Stick up a hand, tell me in the comments how many of you use watercolor? That is your thing. Oh, well, I see the hearts. I see the hearts. Yes, watercolor, watercolor. Isn't it amazing? This is such a versatile medium. It allows you to be tight and controlled if you want and extremely precise. And at the same time, if you wanted to, you could get wet and wild and loose and have a lot of fun. Yes, I see a lot of hearts for watercolor. This is... Uh, I don't know, is it just me? Uh, it, it seems to be a very popular theme. Well, you're in, you're, you're in the right place. We're talking about a celebration, an ode to watercolor, and we'll be exploring how this amazing little box of pigments, when you add water, it unleashes magical properties and abilities and possibilities. So, I'm not gonna wax on lyrical for too long. It's so good to see all of you. Oh, oh yes, that's right. Someone just said Reham is one of the best Egyptian urban sketches ever. That's true. And I am so curious. I'm looking forward to talking to her as well to find out what it's like urban sketching in Egypt and uh, and Saudi Arabia, where she is, she is right now. Hello, Debbie from Los Angeles. Okay, uh, I'm going to invite our first guest. She is a friend of mine all the way from Sydney. She is such a lovely person, such a lovely person. And she knows watercolor like nobody else I know. She... So good to see you. You too. At, what time is it in Sydney? Tell everybody right now. It's 2 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. Oh, and I assume that you've just had lunch? Not yet. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, we have a Sunday tradition. We have breakfast uh -huh. um, of pancakes and ice cream and berries on a Sunday morning with Canadian maple syrup. And so lunch doesn't happen until mid-afternoon. <laughs> oh my goodness, that sounds like a really cool tradition. Who makes the breakfast? I'm curious. It's usually my husband and me, but he's normally the one. I make the coffee and then he'll do the pancakes and I'll make the orange juice. And that's a bit oh, of a team effort. But, it's uh, a team. You know, it's, a, it's been team going on since our daughter was two, so 25 years now. Wow, that's so lovely. And I love that painting behind you, Bird of Paradise. Wow. <laughs> Tell me, what is the what is the scientific name? I know it's got the word heliconia in it. But Julitzia. No, Julitzia. it's Julitzia. Mm. Oh, wow. Yes. It, is, it is stunning. And I assume that is your work. It is, yes. Oh, well. It's watercolor it, on canvas. Wow. Okay. Yes. Well, there's so much to dive into. So, okay. Well, I guess we, we get a, better get started. I know a lot of people are tuning in to hear from you. I've always referred to you as the watercolor scientist. You are a... And you're the iPad king. Oh. 
<laughs> well, today is not about me. So anyway, uh, get, tell us a little bit more about you, like where you're from, what you do with your time. And uh, I mean, everybody knows. So tell us something a bit more personal about you, Jane. All right. I am a, a, an artist and an art teacher. I, I actually love teaching and I've been working with watercolor since I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, I was walking home from school and I went past this little store and there was a little block of watercolors in this store. And I went past, you know, day after day. And eventually I saved up my pocket money and bought it. And that was wow. my first set of watercolors. And I took it home and started playing. And I felt as though it was just a language I understood. It was, it felt so comfortable and so right. And so watercolor has been my friend ever since. And though I trained in etching at, at college and did a lot of work with all those incredible inks and acids and so on, watercolor has been with me all along. And then with young children, I, I switched completely to watercolor. And that's what I've been exploring ever since. And so, I've, yeah, so, yeah, go on. No, I'm just, I was just thinking that you have a really, really long relationship with watercolor. I do. Well, it's nearly 40 years. <laughs> wow. You do so, not look like it could be 40 years, Jane. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, tell us more. Okay. Yes. So what is it that, that, what made you fall in love with it? It's so portable. It, it's so mm -hmm. easy to take with you. It's so, it's so sociable. You can use it with pencil, with pen, with, uh, with gouache on paper with inks, with fountain pens, it will go anywhere and go with anything. Yeah. And I think that that makes it really, really lovely. But more than that, I think if you're working with pigments, it's the purest way that you can explore pigments. Because unlike anything else, that the pigment qualities get hidden, in watercolor they're exposed. And that is the, the um, well, it's sort of the joy and also the challenge of watercolor. So if you consider oil or acrylic, they are protected and also hidden by the oil or acrylic medium. But with watercolor, you have gum arabic as the binder. That's the glue that holds it onto the paper. And basically, other than that, you've got the pigment and the water that evaporates. And so you can see whether a pigment is transparent or opaque, or whether it granulates or whether it doesn't. You can play with whether it stains the paper or whether you lift it off. And so by working with um, just water, you can explore all of those. And you can't do that with anything else, even the iPad. <laughs> That's true, but that is a debate for another day. <laughs> okay, let's dive into urban sketching for you. Like, when did you start urban sketching and using watercolor for it? Because I know you do a lot of botanical illustrations, which I is just of, wonderful. Yes, I do a lot with flowers. Uh, the first time I actually went out and drew from life out in the mm -hmm. landscape, I was 11. And mm -hmm. I was visiting a nursing home and I sat out and tried to draw the ducks in the duck pond. Mm -hmm. um, I started drawing buildings um, from the time I was a teenager and I would go and sit out in, a, in the middle of, uh, Milton, of, um, of the city and, and draw the buildings around me. And it was, I didn't discover urban sketching was a thing until 2013 when I, I met Liz Steele and she told me about it and I just thought, I've been doing this forever. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So I've always loved working from life. And one of the reasons mm -hmm. that I do so many flowers is because I can have them from life. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to work from a photo. And so whatever I do, I like to do it from life if I can. So I'll okay. set up an arrangement of flowers or I'll bring home an enormous gymea lily, which is another favorite flower to paint and actually have them in the house and work from them from life. And, wow. and so drawing buildings and sketching on location and traveling with paint boxes, I've, I've been doing it for such a long time. And now there's this whole tribe of people that are doing it all over yes. the world. Yes. <laughs> it's like family you never knew, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, yes. And this is how we have our reunions for the time being. It is. Well, I miss seeing you at symposiums, but I I'm sure those will come again. So. I'd like to show the audience some of the wonderful work that you do. Can you tell us about them and like uh, where you, wh what are your favorite sketching spots in the city? And like, for instance, where this was done? Well, that's, if I, if I were to look out my window and, and head down the river a bit and then look back, that's the view that I see. So that's, that's painted from quite close to where I live. And it's the Sydney skyline from the north. Um, it's not, there's not that far, just around the corner would be the Harbour Bridge, but we can't see that in the sketch. 
So I thought I'd show some of the sketches in and around Sydney, starting fairly close to home, mm -hmm. um, and then moving in towards the Opera House, which is a wonderful thing to sketch. Um, there we go. And this is a nice view because it's from across the other side of water, and you don't often see this view unless you're arriving by taxi to the opera or something wonderful. Uh, wow. So it's a, a lovely view of the of the Opera House looking front on. And I've done a close up of it as well. It's a, it's a terrific subject to explore. There it is. And that one's that's <laughs> on a, a double page. And eventually I'm going to actually go back and, and put in all of the buildings that, that can carry on across to the right of, the, of that sketch. So this is drawn sitting on the wharf, um, waiting for ferries to come and go. And every time you have to stop and wait for a ferry to come in and then off it goes again and then you can carry on. Um, so it's a, it's a lot of fun to, to just sit there and, and in the sunshine and drawing these fantastic buildings. I'm going to have to ask you for where, like you took, you got to show me on a map where you drew this. Or oh, the next time I visit yes. Sydney, let's go together we'll because, go <laughs> yeah, this is an amazing view. And I it's wanted to ask you view. also, just looking at this, it looks like you could be, you could also do architectural illustration. Have you by any chance done that? Because... Look at that. Well, it's really I love, I love buildings, but I'm a realist. I really like everything to be accurate. And when mm -hmm. I was at school, one of the things I thought about doing was actually scientific illustration. I mm -hmm. love looking down microscopes and drawing in fine oh. detail. And um, wow. I think, you know, I, I really like things to be accurate. So I do measure quite carefully. You know, I do out the pencil and measure it all out, make sure it's all, <laughs> it all fits right, and then try and exactly back to colour. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, we're going to find out more about that. So let's let's move on to the next sketch. Tell us about these places. In... Oh, okay. So this is further away. So that is mm. Bondi Beach. Uh, and that was mm. looking back. I mean, Bondi Beach is such an icon of Sydney. And it was trying to actually get that whole expanse because it's a really, really large beach. And then I wanted to put the tree over the top because it just gives you a little bit of a sense of scale. That's, that's done is... in an A4, just a smaller sketchbook. So that's done in one of these ones. Right. So that's the, oh, okay. the, the classic Moleskine or Moleskine sketchbook. Moleskine. Most of the ones oh. I use these days are right. the, um, the perfect sketchbook, this one, oh, the B5. Right. By Irwin, <laughs> okay. Exactly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it had the name put on it, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Unfortunately, um, IG flips it, or Instagram flips the images, but Yes, Jane Blundell. Everybody knows you. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember Bondi when I was living in Sydney for a little while. This is such a popular hot spot, and I love how you captured that. And this is this is a great spot to get that view as well. Oops, here we go back again. Okay, moving on. Tell us this fascination with rust. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, the thing about it is, I I always like to show sort of the the ugly side or, or make the ugly look beautiful. And, mm. and I think that decay is fascinating in its way. So while I like to produce pretty paintings, I also think that rust and even mould and mildew can be really, really beautiful. And these sorts of things are so lovely to depict with watercolour. So there are a couple of mm. colours that work really, really well. One's called transparent red oxide, which is a, um, a very granulating rust coloured um, pigment. And another one is a, is a natural ground up pigment called piemontite and that combination will give you a, a lovely effect of rust. So I, I love these places that you can go and find these, you know, once again, sort of decay, but it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And I think that's one thing I love about um, urban sketching and the act of, of drawing and, and, and painting on location, because I don't think very many of us appreciated all these things before we started urban sketching. And suddenly it's like the world, there's a whole new layer of the world that opens up and it's beautiful grit yes. and texture, you know, and, and all that. Before that, it's, oh, it's falling apart, you know, what's the big deal? But we find ourselves explaining to our family, like, no, no, there is beauty in this. Yes. I love that we see that. Well, it's even, even these, I love doing these um, mm -hmm. plants when they're all dried. And the colours mm. all gone, but then they become a fascination of lines. So I, I draw yeah. those over and over again as well. Okay. And the other favourite place to sketch in Sydney is Cockatoo Island. Um, so that's you know that's just got all sorts of fallen down things. Yes. So I oh, spent a day there with Pat Southern Pierce, and um, I ju we just went from place to place to place so that she could see it. And I've done all these sketches showing parts of of the whole island. And it's got all these machines that I don't even know what they're for, but they're just a fascination of detail. So there's a lot of detail and rust and, and you know, uh, rusty effects and so on. Cogtoo Island is just a magic place to go and sketch. 
Okay, well, I'm sold. I'm sold, Jane. There's lots of places that you have to take me to, and we'll have to well, visit and draw it together. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> and before we get all those questions about color, because I know you're going to get into them, um, I'm just going to put up your Instagram handle for those of you. For I have no idea why this happens. Okay, I'm just going to put that up uh, so that anyone who's not aware. Um, and, and wants, wants to ask Jane questions about color, especially. Jane, if there are some of the things that you talk about during the show today, could you do like a few posts maybe in the coming week to tell people like, to explain further? Because uh, I'm sure we're gonna get in the, in the comments like, what, what color did you just talk about? So this <laughs> is Jane's Instagram handle. And for our next guest as well, Riham Ali. So Jane Blundell and Riham. Take a screenshot, people. I will share this again, but just in case, this is the person <laughs> you're going to have to look for when you want to know about a precise color. I, I remember you telling me this story about this guy who wrote to you about particular pigment, and you had to correct him and tell him, no, that's the wrong color. And you have numbers associated with them. <laughs> yes. Well, it is confusing. And, uh, and the, the, whoever it was who thought up the system of numbering pigments wasn't very mm -hmm. helpful because one of the most ancient pigments in the world would be Indian red, you know, mm -hmm. Earth red, and it's PR101. Now, if I were numbering, I'd call it PR1. <laughs> and yellow <laughs> ochre, one of the other oldest ones, should be PY1, pigment yellow one, but it isn't. So the numbering system is confusing, but it's actually very helpful if you understand how the numbering system works. You can actually save yourself a lot of money because many colours, many tubes might have a different name. But when you look at the tiny little writing in your best glasses, you'll actually see what <laughs> pigment is in it. And that can help you to know that, oh, phthalo blue and Windsor blue and blocks blue or whatever it is, they're all actually the same colour. So you don't buy, oh, you know, too many things. That's something I didn't know about. So you mean in every tube of watercolour, they actually tell you what pigment? They, they put the number in They there? do now. Um, oh. That didn't happen. Daniel Smith was the first company who actually well. put the pigment information on their tubes, mm -hmm. as far as I know. And it's, it's become something that's now available on websites and on tubes. And it's actually mm -hmm. really important because then we can avoid the pigments that are going to fade. And there are some. And we can choose yeah. the pigments that are going to be light fast. It's <laughs> fine in a sketchbook, but if you're going to have your work on the wall like this, right. then yes. you need to make sure that With the pigments light. aren't going to fade. Okay. And I'm sure that your, your website talks about a lot of these things, correct? Oh, yes. Because <laughs> I'm sure that there, there are questions. I see, like, Rita said, mind blown, et cetera. Well, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I, I didn't know all these things. It's fascinating. Okay. Oh, there's so much to get to. And this, well, we have a few minutes, but, you know, let's, let's jump into it anyway. Let's, let's, I want to show more of your work. So tell us about these. I mean, I, I, I love the fact that a lot of your work is like this limited palette that you use so well and then suddenly you've got this burst of color these what? are brighton beach in melbourne so i showed some close to home and then i thought i'd show a couple that are a bit further away so this is melbourne mm -hmm. and i went down and, and went sketching down there and these are amazing boxes on the brighton beach and they are all painted in the most remarkable colors so of course mm -hmm. i want to match the colors <laughs> and uh, I mean, I love colour, and so I'll, I'll always try and be as realistic in, in colour as possible. And they really work, you know, purple and yellow and blue and orange and all these sorts of colours. They're beautiful, and they go right down yeah. the beach. I don't yeah. I hate to think what they're worth. I think that they're sort of, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for these um, little beach houses. But they are really, really charming, and it's such a distinctive I, part I of, of it, Brighton and Melbourne. And it cheers it up so much with all those colours. It's like this. Yes. It's, it you, you look at it and I'm sure it's like instant happy place, right? It's Absolutely. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> and the tourists come in droves. <laughs> so oh, you're yes. trying to sketch and there's someone it's, in front and post. It's an Instagram someone. moment as well, I'm sure. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. But it's lovely. So when you paint, you actually try to match the exact color that you see using the pigments in your palette. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. And then right. when it's in shadow, I, I either mm -hmm. do one of two things. So I will either... Mm -hmm mix the opposite colour, a bit of the opposite colour to put that colour into shadow. Or mm -hmm. to be a bit faster, I'll, I'll add a bit of James Gray. And, and that's a mixture of Persian and Ultramarine that will also help it to be a neutral tint and put the colour into shadow. So I can be a purist about it or I can be uh -huh. practical and, uh, yeah. and that makes it a bit easier. Well, it, that's a perfect segue because I was going to ask you about James Gray anyway. You have you have this relationship with Daniel Smith and you've got your own color. So how did that happen, please? 
and well, also before you jump to that, also tell me, like you were saying that um, all these tubes now, watercolor, starting with Daniel Smith, starting they started to put a pigment numbers in there. Was that because of you? Did you tell them no, you got to oh, do no. it? <laughs> <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> no, but when I started, I started using mm -hmm. Daniel Smith back in 1995, and it was mm -hmm. the first time I'd seen those numbers, and I started to look at them. And this is pre world wide web you couldn't look things up so easily so i had to start looking through books and encyclopedias trying to find out what these numbers meant and daniel smith used to put articles in a in a catalog so i was reading up and that was so it was a really great way to understand you know what the pigments were and so i i've noticed you know a lot of a lot of people have been trying to get all companies to include mm -hmm. all of the information on their websites all the mm -hmm. information on the tubes so that we know what we're buying um mm -hmm. but this particular one came about because a lot of the time people are wimpy when they work with watercolour. They don't go dark <laughs> enough because they add too much water. And it's harder. If you're trying to mix greys and, and you've got a wimpy blue and a, and a wimpy um, brownie colour, you can't get a strong dark. So one of the reasons I used to put this together is, is I just mix the two colours and into a well and, and, and pre-make it. So lots of people make this combination of burnt sienna ultramarine in their palette all the time. But I wanted mm -hmm. to have it ready made. It saves time when you're painting. But it also means that you've got an instant dark. And as I mm -hmm. don't use black pigments, I use mm -hmm. mixed colours to create the darks. Um, mm -hmm. This was a really convenient way of doing it. And it's unlike anything that was available because any grey that you buy has a black pigment. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm lecturing you. Black pigments <laughs> absorb all the light and they end up becoming a dead spot. So anyone who yes. uses Payne's grey and all these things with all these black in them, they just mm -hmm. absorb the light and you, mm -hmm. you end up with a dark passage. Whereas if you create your own darks, um, create your own color, dark colors with mixed bright colors, you create lively darks. And that's what mm -hmm. I do. So that's what Jane's Gray is. It's a mixture of Bernstein and Ultramarine at a particular ratio where it just sits on the slightly blue side and it creates a fabulous shadow color and absolute uh -huh. neutral tint, but it's also non-staining. So it is different from anything that was actually available otherwise. Is that James Gray? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, of course. All right. Um, makes it makes perfect sense. And you were saying that um, I can see in the in the comments. Oh, this is a good question from L. Ravi Krishnan. How do you preserve your watercolors? Because you're saying that there's a gum arabic binder and all that sort of thing, and you do have to take care because some of the pigments do fade faster than others. So, how do you personally preserve your artwork? Well, I choose pigments that are light fast, as in mm -hmm. they rate in one or two over scale mm -hmm. where there's one, two, three or four. And one mm -hmm. or two um, should last 100 to 125 years. Wow. Beyond that, okay. I then you mm -hmm. don't put them in direct sunlight. And mm -hmm. for ones like this that are not behind glass, I spray mm -hmm. a UV spray over the top of them. So by choosing mm -hmm. light fast pigments, keeping them out of direct sunlight and, and perhaps you know protecting them with either a UV glass or UV spray, they're protected. But most of us in urban sketches are working in a sketchbook and it's automatically protected because it's mm -hmm. not exposed to light. Yeah. So it's the one area where if you wanted to use the genuine alizarin crimson, which is a PR83 and future <laughs> it will fade, you can use it in a sketchbook because it's safe there. But if you want okay. something that's not going to fade, you use a different crimson, not that one. <laughs> okay. I, I think for all those people out there who are like good numbers flipping through their heads, just watch the show again and take notes. <laughs> you can pause <laughs> it on YouTube and then you can take notes. <laughs> this is amazing stuff, Jane. I can just see the numbers flipping through your head. I, I think for you, it's muscle memory now. You just look at that and you know exactly like that curtain, for instance, you know what pigment that is and that's different. <laughs> yes. Do you see, do you see the, those numbers in your head when you look at stuff? Almost. No, when I, when I look at mm -hmm. something, I'm always looking at what you would use to mix it. And uh, oh, it drives my okay. family mad, but you know, it, <laughs> it's always constantly going on. And, and yes, I mean, I, I, I look at a color and I think, yes, that's a mixture of sap green and on the sea green, and I can tell you what pigments are in them. Or I can see. <laughs> and I'm always thinking of how you would depict something, um, what techniques, and so on. So it's constantly just ticking around in my head. Yeah, but okay. it's, uh, it's, it's not essential to, once you're actually painting, you don't have to be thinking of all the numbers, but when you're choosing the colors, it's very helpful. So mm -hmm. that you know that if you're working with a, a limited palette, say you're using um, um, ultramarine as your as your blue and a quinacridone gold as your yellow, 
<laughs> then you know that you can yeah. add a colour called undersea green, which is made of those two, and it will harmonise. So yes, the foliage up through the top there is done with a colour called undersea green, which is made out of ultramarine and quinacridone gold. And there's also oh. some sap green, which was ultramarine, as which is um, quinacridone gold and phthalo green. And so those sorts of things really help you when you're creating harmony in work to make sure that everything ties together. This painting mm. is um, in Lord Howe Island and it's got a lovely combination of burnt of um, goldfite and buff titanium to make the sand. Um, they're two colours that I just adore because they're very, very granulating. So they give you the idea of sand, um, but they've got this lovely earthy colour to them as well. Yes, it looks wow. a little bit like a, um, a Naples yellow, but it's uh, much more realistic and it captures the Australian beautiful white sand. So I love doing yeah. landscapes as well as urban um, and leaves and plants and flowers. I'll, I'll paint anything really. <laughs> 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 okay, very simple question then. It's how long does something like this take you to, to paint? Um, usually one and a half to two hours. I'm not a fast mm -hmm. worker. I, I like the details, so I like to mm -hmm. sit down and take my time. So mm -hmm. generally about that sort of time. Okay. You know, sitting with you, you finish it and I don't. <laughs> but no, but it, that's because we're yakking the entire time. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's jump into some of your botanical illustrations, which are absolutely stunning. So here I, I mean, moved up to, this is up in Cairns in Queensland. Certainly. So I've, I've gone down to Victoria and now we've gone up to Queensland. Mm -hmm. And I was doing a workshop in the Botanic Gardens and I love painting leaves. They're the most wonderful sort of thing to just pick up and paint because every individual leaf is a new challenge and you can work from life. You can practice your drawing and you can practice your painting. And I just love picking up a leaf. And once again, it's that little element of decay, the bits that make it imperfect. And so mm. I actually took a photo of the leaf and the drawing at the same time because um, uh, it, it's just interesting to try and um, to capture it as precisely as possible. Wow. I mean that is that is really stunning. Do you have you published anything of your botanical illustrations? Because you've done so much. No, I haven't. It's one of the things that I'm considering doing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm just doing a course. I've been, <clears throat> been organising a course on on watercolours. So it's called Mastering mm -hmm. Watercolours, and I'm going to do a course on botanicals and florals. But I haven't done a book on it as yet. Um, I've done books yeah. on on colour mixing, and uh -huh. I'm working on one called Working with Triads. Uh, so we have reference books, but uh, eventually I will I will get around to it. Yeah, I think you sh definitely should. It's very inspiring. I mean, like this oh, is you. is that that's the same leaf, correct? So that yes. was on one page, and then you expanded to do these as yes. well. Yes. Oh. So the whole workshop was actually in the botanic <clears throat> gardens, and each wow. each morning and afternoon I would go out and paint something else, just standing in the gardens. So those are little wow. um, little heliconia flowers, and then the top mm -hmm. are um, uh, coconut. Um, <laughs> and the a baby coconut. Yeah, wow. And I didn't realize that there would be bits of blue in there with the holoconias as well. The seeds, no. I know, and they are really that color. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing. I think I would love to also, I mean, in addition, in addition to going with you to paint the, the Sydney Opera House and all that, I would love to go to the Botanic Gardens with you just to see things through your eyes. Because I think you, you, with your ability to see color and pigment, you notice things that most of us don't. So it'd be just fascinating. And it's always oh, so cool hanging out with you. So, Well, I'd take you what, down and see the, you know, the, <coughs> the, the ones, that, the carnivorous ones, because they're really fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fly traps and, and, and the picture plants and all that. Because <laughs> I'd love to see you draw them. <laughs> okay, done. done, done. We will one day. Okay, let's let's jump into this, and uh, it, that is so precise. And okay, all you people, time to blow your minds again. Tell us what you're at, doing. At the here. beginning of every sketchbook, I always do a um, a color chart, and that's one of them. I I like to play around with different shapes and different um, different layouts, and and just always do it because I often get asked, "What color have you used?" And it's much easier to just open the book and show them, okay, it's this, and then they can see what it looks like. So I always do one of those at the beginning of the book. And it'll it'll be the paint out of my travel palette, whatever that happens to be. And it doesn't change a lot. It tends to have 24 colours. Um, but in any one painting, I might only use five or six. 
I don't mm -hmm. use them all in, in every painting. <clears throat> but having those charts, it's, it's a helpful for other people more than me. If I get a new sketchbook, it's really good to know how, it, how the colours work on the paper. But because I've been using the same sketchbooks a lot, I'm very familiar with it. But it's a helpful, it's a teaching tool. And I, as I say, I love teaching. <laughs> that is true. And you're really good at it too. Which brings us to this. And time for our challenge. Okay. So tell yes. us. Okay, tell us what, oh, where is that? Okay, tell us, tell us about triads, and then we'll jump okay. into the challenge tile. A lot of the time when I'm teaching, <clears throat> I, I encourage people to try and plan around a basic primary triad. So this is a really lovely primary triad made up of a Hansi yellow medium, which is like a, a primary yellow, quinacridone rose, it would be called permanent rose in a lot of brands, and ultramarine, which is um, a very, very common colour for any range. You, you, you'll always get an ultramarine or a French ultramarine. So this is a totally workable primary triad. And if you just show how many colours you can make with this, Rob, that chart. <laughs> yes. Okay. So from, from that's the, that. Yeah. So yeah, that, yeah, that one first. So you can yes, see you can okay. make very lovely greens, beautiful purples and really bright oranges and reds. But if you start intermixing further, so create the tertiary mixes, then you can create just about any colour you want. So that's what the next one is. Ta-da! There it is. My so those, all of those colours are made out of just those three, just various proportions of those three colours. Oh my so goodness. a primary triad like that gives you the ability to do just about anything. My right, challenge so is to yes. work with an earth triad. Uh -huh. So in this case, I've used goethite, which is a yellow earth made with PY43. Um, you could use yellow <laughs> ochre or you could use raw sienna or you could use even quinacridone gold if you want to. But it's nice if it's actually an earth pigment. So yellow ochre or goethite or raw sienna are perfect. Then mm -hmm. it's using Indian red. So that's mm -hmm. a, a pinky toned red pigment. You could use burnt sienna if you don't have Indian red or you can use piemontite or you can use um, Venetian red or quite a few others, but it's an earthy red. And then the blue mm -hmm. I've used is cerulean chromium. You could use ultramarine if you don't have that sort of colour, but I really like cerulean chromium because it's another earthy colour. And all of these are just a little bit less transparent and they're very granulating. And when you water them down, they behave beautifully. So don't use them too thick. And so the whole of that sketch of the Bathurst courthouse is done entirely with those three colours. So what you get is incredible colour harmony. Mm -hmm. So my challenge, is to explore what you can with your the closest mi mix to a an earth triad. So an earthy okay. yellow, an earthy red, and an earthy blue, and see what okay. you can do. And there's the wheel made with them. You create earthy greens, earthy purples, and earthy oranges, but with amazing harmony. And you just work with them a little bit more watered down. It's mm -hmm. perfect for urban sketching subjects, and it's a really lovely triad to explore. So, okay. uh, so that's my challenge. That is brilliant. I'm sure lots of people are going to get have so much fun with that. Um, just quickly before we go, can you explain a bit, like, uh, give us some advice, because there are so many different kinds of watercolors, and some stain, some don't, some granulate, some don't. So how do you go about cataloging all these things, and why do you think that's, that's an important thing for urban sketches to do? That's a good question, Rob. Um, a lot of people struggle a little bit if they use colours that stain, because if you make a mistake, you can't lift it off. And so understanding which ones stain and which don't is helpful. So generally speaking, if you're scared of that, avoid the phthalos. That's the, the phthalo blue and phthalo green, which is <laughs> PB 15.3 and PB PG 7. Um, those in particular are really, really staining colours. And they can be, they're the sort of colours that are a little bit, unrealistic and over the top. I, I generally suggest if you're using them, which I do, you always mix them with something else so that they don't look unrealistic. So generally, if you work more with in the, in the blues, if you work with um, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue and cerulean blue, they are non-staining colours. They tend to be a bit more granulating, but they won't stain. And if you're working with um, with the greens, if you if you want to work with a green that's, that's already, um, that's a bit more gentle, you can use one um, that is a, a liftable one, so Ridian. So earth colours are also generally not too staining and you can always mix in your earth colours with your lovely primary triads, whichever one you want to use. 
And so whether it's burnt sienna or raw sienna or burnt umber or raw umber, all these beautiful earth colours, uh, you can play around with those as well. And they generally won't stain either. Indian red's an exception. It, it does stain a bit. It's a, it's a bit of a wild child, that one, but it is rather fun. <laughs> So I usually suggest okay. that people start with um, a workable mm -hmm. triad and, and explore that first. Mm -hmm. Something like the Hansa Yellow and the Panacodome Rose and the Ultramarine. Mm -hmm. But just give you a really okay. workable range and then you might mm -hmm. extend that and add a few more. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and whichever brand you're working with, there will always be that sort of mid yellow and there'll be a rose red and there'll be an Ultramarine. So whatever brand you're using, you'll be able to find these sorts of colours. And, uh, and play around with those. And then you might add a burnt sienna so you can make amazing greys. You might add a yellow ochre or a raw sienna so you can increase your, your um, mixing potential a little bit more. And you might add a convenience green. So you start out with just a few. Go with artist quality and buy a few colours first rather than getting a big set of student colours that will frustrate you. The, the better you, the materials you work with, the more you're going to enjoy what you do. So I really suggest, even if you're a beginner, get the professional colours. Uh, the pink Get the good better. stuff. <laughs> and that, yeah, it just works. It's just better. <laughs> in, invest in the good stuff, yeah. Invest in yourself, exactly. You're going to spend your time doing this. Work with materials that are going to help you. Otherwise, you spend okay. your whole time scratching away at your paint, trying to get the pigment and trying to get strong colours and wondering what the problem is. Get good paper, get good paints. You deserve it because you're going to spend some time enjoying it. Um, so, you know, I, I just don't bother with the student ranges. Fabulous. I think we, we unfortunately, we've got to end your segment here, but there, I mean, it's so chock full of information. All those people are going like, what's that color again? What's that color again? Rewatch on IGTV or YouTube. Pause when you need to and take copious notes. <laughs> and they're all on my website. So oh, on yeah. my blog, I have done a paint out of every brand of watercolor available. And on my website, you can find them all by pigment. So it's all it's all available there, and they're both yep. searchable. Find find Jane here, Jane Blundell Art. And with that, I'm sorry we have to end this segment, but That's I'm sure right. that we will talk to you again. Thank you so much, Jane. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers and enjoy Cheers. your lunch afterwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. 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 That was Jane Blundell, people. I'm sure that you had a good time with that. And now we are looking to join on the other side of the world. We are inviting Reham Ali, who is currently in Saudi Arabia. And she's going to tell us more about sketching in that part of the world. What inspires her? Her style is quite different. Hi. Hello, Reham. Hi. How, how are you? Hello. It's Hi. so good it's to see you. Thank so you. good to see you. Yeah, okay, so your style is fascinating because you are, there is so much passion in your work. I can see that in, in the bold, confident strokes and the splashes and all that. It's very expressive. Um, but before we dive into your actual artwork, can you introduce yourself a little bit and tell us about where you're from and why, you, why do you go between Egypt and Saudi Arabia, for instance? That's fascinating. So tell us what you do. Uh, first of all, I'm an interior designer. Mm -hmm. I used to work as an interior designer for um, 13 years, uh, but also I teach interior design in college for um, 20 years now. Um, <laughs> yes, and recently, not, not so recently, for the last uh, seven years, I moved to Saudi Arabia. Uh, I work uh, as a professor there in the interior architecture department. Um, uh, and let me say that I moved for, from Egypt, where Alexandria is my home city. It's really cosmopolitan city to mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, which I consider the most um, mysterious <laughs> place mysterious. On <laughs> and misunderstood. Let me say that misunderstood, totally misunderstood. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So uh, the experience I I um, I try I first tried watercolor in Saudi Arabia. I first tried uh, urban sketching in Saudi Arabia. Uh, before that, I used to use other materials like um, oil, like acrylic. Maybe that's mm. the reason I use watercolor with this passion that you say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
with bold expressiveness. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe because okay. a bold expressive uh, way could match my personality. I am a little bit, no, I am a very messy person. Not a little bit, very messy person. <laughs> You're an exuberant person. <laughs> uh, maybe, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is true, that is true. Okay, so basically, for what I understand is you used to, to, to use oils and acrylics and you, you switched to watercolor also because you're moving around. Exactly, because uh, the watercolor was the lightest thing that I could back with me, in fact. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and th this one is the uh, palette I get with me. And uh, uh -huh. by mistake, my, my mother I assumed it was a makeup kit. <laughs> <laughs> so I told her, okay, it's a makeup, put it in my purse. Okay. <laughs> so I went to the idea with that. And that uh, it, it looks dirty and used now, but it was brand new because I, I really wouldn't touch it at that time. Uh, I, yeah, didn't, yeah. Um, I didn't use to like this medium uh, for oh. obvious reasons. I, 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 it's uh, an um, um, unforget, unforgiven uh, medium. At that unforgiving. Time, I used to see, see that unforgiven. But after yeah. that, I get connect more connected, uh, and that's the, the way I loved about this medium, that uh -huh. your mistakes couldn't be corrected, and mm. I love this. And mm -hmm. always, I, th I tell my student, I tell myself, love your mistakes. They mm -hmm. are new babies. They, they make the, your your painting more life. Sometimes these mistakes, you know, like like our faces, without. Mm -hmm. Botox. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are working on iPad and you have this do magic. Uh, but what I like, what I like about uh, manual sketching is that we don't have this option. In fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. With with what I call analog medium, there is no undo. That's true. I have become so reliant on undo. I don't use it all the time, but. In real life, when I make a mistake, not necessarily with art, I'm like, oh, I wish there was an undo <laughs> button for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, tell us what it's like. Uh, and, and also, so do you spend, like, in one year, you spend part of your time in Saudi Arabia, and then after that, you go back to Alexandria, correct? Uh, exactly. Right? Uh, I spend okay. most of the time in Saudi Arabia, and mm -hmm. uh, the, all the summer vacation in Egypt, except ah, this year. Um, uh, when I first uh, knew urban sketching, it was through social media, in fact. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the uh, website for um, urban sketchers Alexandria. It was a chapter uh -huh. in Alexandria. Okay. Uh, I know them when I was just moving to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh. <laughs> so all the time, uh, the first year, I didn't do any sketching at all. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, I didn't do any painting at all. I didn't mm -hmm. even hold a pencil. For second year, also, starting from 2015, I uh -huh. said, no, I have, I need to go back to art. Right, and okay. Then, uh, I started this uh, painting from pictures at first because I mm -hmm. really feeling homesick. I was sketching my home city. <laughs> and that's the start of everything. I started sketching places I have memories with and okay. um, took advantage with the first with the first no, I just wanted to uh, this. No, this one is not my home city this is where I okay. work this is the college oh. of design uh -huh. okay. ah yeah this is the the main atrium the main entrance uh, college of design for uh, the college of uh, uh, university of the Mem, where I work mm -hmm. uh, it's I don't know if the audience uh, have some of my students or not, but uh, oh, we perhaps, yes. this, this scene uh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like uh, painting in Saudi Arabia? Because I get the impression that you're not very fond of it. This one also in uh, Saudi Arabia, in one of the uh -huh. uh, um, side streets. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. Um, uh, what it's like to sketch in Saudi Arabia. In fact, mm -hmm. it's um, quite as any other country, except mm -hmm. for the heat. Mm. This is the problem. I don't have any problems, uh, whether for men or women, we all could sketch outdoor, 
-hmm. but the heat and the um, humidity is really high here. Mm. Um, yeah, give people a, give people an idea of how high it gets in in summer. How uh, hot does it get? Forty, sometimes fifty, sometimes fifty. Oh, uh -huh. that's that's like uh, 120 uh, Fahrenheit for those of you in no, the U.S. Most, that's crazy. Most of my apple sketching at the first were in, indoor, in in the mall, in the cafe, some places like that. Um, right. But we're already in the in the in the winter. We can go out in some places. Um, uh, in fact, in in Saudi Arabia, we have two chapters, two very active chapters. They are mm -hmm. recent, just two mm -hmm. years in Jeddah which is very mm -hmm. uh, vibrant uh, mm -hmm. with all the action. And the other one, <laughs> New York, which is the capital. Mm -hmm. Okay. And where, which city are you in? No, I live in the Eastern uh, province. It's um, uh, in the East, it's El Khobar, uh, mm -hmm. where the oil, you know, the oil industry <laughs> is here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We so, have many, um, many nationalities in this uh, city. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. like my home, it's kind of a cosmopolitan one. Um, okay. The architectural scene in the Gulf is not what people could think. It's very mm -hmm. modern cities yeah. with uh, skyscrapers and uh, mm. uh, glass and steel. And and... Yes, things like yeah. that. Uh, okay. But I, I usually I search for all the places like the uh, photos you, you already posted. And um, mm -hmm. I already... Uh, um, teach um, a workshop here in a historical place. Uh, this art workshop were arranged by uh, AIA Middle East. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it was really amazing because lots of people from uh, other places around the city, from Bahrain and other nationalities participate. Italian, American, of course, Saudi. Uh, <sighs> and it was mixed uh, women and men whatever, oh, one of my professors attend, one, two of my uh, uh, students attend, so it was virus in Yeah, Egypt that's, that's, and that's, that's great to know. So there's actually a lot of interest in urban sketching in the Middle there's East. There's lots of interest, but uh, mm -hmm. um, I, am, um, I am a very lazy person. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a very honest one. <laughs> I, I'm very honest. Um, uh, uh, the chapter in Jeddah, they tried to help us and uh -huh. to establish a chapter in Khobar, uh, but I didn't help. I, I, I'm, I'm honest with you, I didn't, I didn't help that much. I, I should make more effort to contact people, to, to do things like that. Well, mm -hmm. I understand. It, it takes but time to build a chapter from scratch. It takes time and um, yeah. most of the time when I sketch, it came spontaneous. When I'm going mm. out, I oh, yeah. and and I used to sketch solo, even in Alexandria, mm -hmm. I sketched mm -hmm. solo. Because the, okay. the chapter there, after I moved to Saudi Arabia, most of them traveled to other countries, even the admin. Mm. Oh, now, now okay. Mm -hmm. in, in Egypt at all. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad that you do get to go back to Alexandria and paint where you love. But you've also been painting and you and painting watercolor like this is uh, actually i'm not sure where this one is where was this painted uh, on location? this is in porto in porto okay porto, that, yes that was this wasn't is, that your first symposium this is what uh, my first symposium and my first ever first to, to to meet any one of you <laughs> <laughs> i remember meeting you in porto i mean well, there's so many people but you really stood out because you're such a bright personality. It was, it was a pleasure. Yeah. So, yeah. You would, so you're discovering uh, little sections of Porto, and you sent us some great stuff here as well. This uh, isn't this all from this, Porto. This one in Amsterdam. Oh, in Amsterdam. Uh, okay. In Amsterdam during my yeah. workshop there, and uh -huh. this this is the first sketch I did in Porto, uh, yeah. and it was the um, warm up for me. Uh, I remember the, 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 my first impression to the symposium as well uh, as a whole. I, I remember I went to Peggy and asked her, "What is sketch walk exactly? <laughs> if I'm to walk or sketching?" She told me, "Riham, you missed it." Okay, I, I don't know what I missed. Okay, I will go to warm up and see the city. <laughs> yes, we walk, we sketch. Often we also eat, 
And then we walk, we sketch some more, I'm sure. Well. The, at that time, the concept was not that clear. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this is uh, beautiful. Thank you beautiful so much. Stuff. Uh, yeah. Porto was easy for me to sketch. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Easier than Amsterdam because Porto, uh, you know, Portugal is a Mediterranean country. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the culture itself and the essence of the place is more like Alexandria. Alexandria is very, mm. it's, 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 this is the first Mediterranean city on earth. So we mm. have this, uh, this hype, Yanni. If you went to Alexandria, it would remind you more of Athens. Okay, because wow. uh, I believe you have this misconception that all the Middle East are the same. No, we, we are not the same at, at all. Mm. Uh, uh, for, for example, Lebanon. Lebanon is very, very uh, more liberal. You, you, you will feel that you are in Europe. In, uh, oh, in Lebanon. Okay. And even, even, <laughs> even people. Uh -huh. um, also in the Gulf. Now I can uh, feel the difference between each Gulf city. Uh, mm -hmm. I live in Saudi oh. Arabia, which is a large, large mm -hmm. country. Uh, mm -hmm. You will find the the, the, um, the desert. You will find mm -hmm. the very authentic places and the very ultra modern. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize. No, yeah, you, you should realize. That. Yeah, it's it's a full spectrum. You have from very full, conservative full, to quite full, liberal. Full, yeah. Uh huh. That's fascinating. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your artwork now, because look at this. I mean, again, exuberant, expressive, dynamic. These are all Thanks. words that I would certainly use. Where was this one done? This is the entrance of the hub at the, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, the Amsterdam Symposium. Oh, okay. But wow. I, 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 till now, I couldn't pronounce the name of the church. Ah, so, Zydekirk. Uh, thank Zydekirk. you. <laughs> I think, I'm not sure that I got it right. I sort of vaguely remember, but yeah, well, you've, uh, given, you've made it very majestic. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. But uh, <laughs> when, I, when I explain this uh, style, uh, um, yeah. you know, there is a technique and a style. Yeah. And okay. usually when I paint, I, I try to um, sketch um, a building that I really feel related and connected. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, Amsterdam is amazing, very, very beautiful. But really, I didn't feel that connection at first. So mm -hmm. I try to make my workshop to be focused on my technique. So mm -hmm. whenever, wherever I, I paint, I will find something interesting. Because mm -hmm. for me, I, I, I love balconies. I love this clutter. I love this building that everyone is uh, putting their own laundry and things like that <laughs> yes just, yeah. just like uh, portugal uh, but the people in amsterdam they respect the law and, uh, and uh, it's more proper uh, exactly but it's yeah. not me I, I told you i'm a very messy person i love to see people's life come uh, visit come visit in hong kong you got to then we'll, i'll take you to places where the laundry are like international flags everywhere and the walls are studded with air conditioning and grit and all that and yeah, you know yeah, when we, I, when i first uh, met um, Liz Steele in porto she told mm -hmm. me you are the one who paints the laundry i told I, 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 <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm famous with the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think people know you for the one who does these amazing balconies, and I can certainly see why. But let's just flip through more artwork so that we can get to how you, so that you can start to explain to us about your your approach and your technique and and how yeah. you go about doing things. So, uh, yes. So, uh, usually, when I uh, because I'm interior designer. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm tend to focus, meaning I like details more than taking the whole panoramic view. Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular uh, painting is for the tram. Um, I, I, I consider my, myself a professional in painting tram ways because uh, <laughs> I tram right in, in Alexandria with all the colors. So, and I used to take the tram in uh, during college and and. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a uh, part of our memories, our lives. This charm is in uh, Lisbon, 
by the way. Uh -huh. So I, okay. I tried to make my own collection of tramways around the world. Oh. Uh, well, another so, reason you have to come to Hong Kong. I'm, I'm telling you, it's not, it's not easy to capture a tramway when it's moving. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, in Portugal, it was easy because the, uh, you, you can literally sit down in any place because it's a touristic site and mm -hmm. um, it will come again. You will catch, capture it once and it right. will come again. <laughs> Uh, as well and in, uh, in uh, Alexandria because it's too slow in Alexandria this is the slowest transportation ever so you can catch it <laughs> I, I believe that it could stop for you <laughs> oh that's so good <laughs> where, where is this one done because I love this the is... intricacy of that bit. yes uh, um, um, this part of the, of the building here, uh, you, you will find in all the building in, um, in the side streets in Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh -huh. This style were the, the, the residential building for uh, most of the uh, single people working in Saudi Arabia uh, from the 70s till now. Oh. <laughs> uh, the same shape, it will be uh, repeated. Oh. And, and, and lots of places, yeah. You can find the same building in Riyadh, you will find the same, but I don't know, maybe there's the same one who introduced Saudi Arabia. <laughs> in the 70s, still live till now. Because I, I asked them, I asked uh -huh. them, but nobody got the answer. Uh, oh, and why the, it's so I told you uh, who lives there is single, uh, the bicycle. <laughs> Uh, uh, people from um, Indian or Filipino because uh, they have the fitness uh, to do that. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I know we are talking about watercolor, but since we are talking about my style and what I want to uh, sketch um, yeah. from the beginning, I want to sketch people's life. Mm. So I get notice with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome stuff. Uh, awesome. Really this and, one in uh, Cairo. Um, mm, this okay. uh, uh, old um, place used to be a historical building, but uh, as you can see, people misused it. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, maybe this is uh, beautifying the ugliness. That's what it well. is. Well, that's actually seeing the beauty in everything. I think that's what urban sketches would say. Sure. <laughs> and, but that's, a, that's very important. And I think that's why, I mean, I love being an urban sketcher also. Lots of things catch the eye, whether people think it's beautiful or not. Uh, this is the same concept. Uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, this is the main gate of a building. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can see part of it, the, the um, uh, rough iron uh, there, it's very beautiful. But uh, this gate w used to be something really beautiful from architectural perspective, but people used it as a um, store. I don't know how. <laughs> uh, it's illegal, but I like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, you, can, I, I, you see, you I can go, find that in, in, yeah. in Amsterdam at all. So I, I feel yeah, lost in Amsterdam. <laughs> You, you'll see places like this in Hong Kong too, where it's like a little alleyway and people make use of the space and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I totally understand. But it gives us a little glimpse into the culture because not every culture will do this kind of thing, right? If they're very proper, they won't. If they cannot get away with it, with it they can't. But in I, I, some I, cities... I don't know how, how come they get away with that. It's, it's really a very ancient building over 100 mm -hmm. years. Uh, but I, I have not, nothing to say. I just kept <laughs> uh, But um, okay, keep the, this painting. I want to. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, okay, um, I want to explain something. Even the style is very expressive, as you say, and uh, I agree with you. But I really depend on maybe one simple element: it's the shadows. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not complicated at all. Just concentrate. Where is the shadows? Uh, if you need to uh, make some exaggeration, do it. But if that help you to fo to to focus and show your focal point, because I believe that without focal point, you don't have a sketch. Because a sketch is really 
just visual brainstorming what I want to say in mm -hmm. painting. That's all. Well, it makes absolute sense. I also love how you your work is actually quite loose. You work quite very loosely. So how do you balance uh, playing with the color, playing with the with the water, but not getting too messy? Uh huh. Exactly. Uh, first of all, the, uh, as I told you, I I really focus. Where is my focal point? Mm -hmm. And I put it in my head. Um, or if it's uh, really difficult, I make a um, small sketch uh, uh, with, with pencil. That's where is my focal point could be. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. After that, I start painting with the shadows of, the, of this focal point. So the, oh, shape of the, shadows, okay. the shape of the shadows is the most important thing. If mm. I get it correct, it's okay. Everything else is going to be just a layer of color. If you if you watch if you observe my work, you will find that I use very limited colors. Yes, uh, and that's oh. that's another question. Can you explain what what influences you, influences your color choices? Um, my, that, that's surrounding around me, and uh, I don't mm -hmm. have much colors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have beige, 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 and green. So uh, I try to make that <laughs> ingredient from these uh, earthy colors. Um, um, that, 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 that this is the, really the color of the architectural as atmosphere around me. Uh, ah, okay. In Cairo, okay. in Cairo, some of the uh, old places, I love sketching old places more than the modern one. You will find dust. That dust, the dust and dirt. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, this is it. That's it. This is Hammam that, in Old yeah. Cairo. Uh, oh, this is so cool. uh, it's, sorry, it's not Old Cairo. It's Islamic, uh, Islamic Cairo. Uh, but but you you see the, the the earthy color is part of our nature because um, I think Arct uh, the architects will know more than me. Uh, the materials and the stone and marble available at the country at that time were these uh, with this color, with this color. Unlike uh, Iran, for example, you will find the uh, the blue, the cobalt blue, and thing. Uh, this theme, this cold theme of colors. Mm, but in, okay. in, in Egypt, uh, more of the colors are the warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. I can I can tell that there's a lot of warmth. And, and the way that you put it together, it really gives, conveys a sense of history as well. Because as you said, Alexandria and, and lots of Egypt is like some of the oldest parts of the earth in terms of civilization. That's, and I love the shadows that you have done. So you were saying that you create the shadow shape and you use the, that to the, define the, your yes. focal point. The direction yeah. of the shadow, then everything mm. comes piece of cake. Just <laughs> add you. Uh, by the end, you can add some splashes, but be careful. Mm -hmm. These splashes of water make the same direction you want the viewer look at. Because ah. that is how to draw is how to mm -hmm. see, how you mm -hmm. see, and mm -hmm. how you want your audience watch your mm -hmm. painting. This is important. Okay. <laughs> Makes absolute sense. Okay. Tell us about some of these other ones. Like this uh, one, you're telling me about your memory. Uh, exactly. I, I, I uploaded uh, this painting so we can put it with the charm of uh, Lisbon. So I found that different uh, atmosphere. This is the, the red one with the uh, different uh, uh, architectural scene. And here is in a very old district in Alexandria. It's, it's, we are, are famous uh, of this yellow uh, throne, by the way. Um, and this district is very famous in, in, in Alexandria. Anyone from the country will, will know it. Okay. It's, it's beautiful. I can see why you love the character and the culture of your home city. Um, okay, so it's come to that time of every segment where it is time to challenge our audience. Tell us what uh, you want us to do. Uh -huh. uh, the challenge it came from my style and came from the main subject I usually draw is balconies. 
it, it doesn't have to be a balcony. But I really encourage that because <laughs> but I really encourage that because because looking up, looking up will give you a right angle for this challenge. Um, okay. <laughs> That's <right. laughs> uh, um, this challenge um, uh, with uh, you can do it with basic steps. Okay, I'll explain it. The first step you can draw uh, your uh, sketch uh, with with any medium, uh, whether it's a pencil or a pen. Here I used the ink uh, at first, just to outline. Then make a wash. So just um, yani, don't make that wash is very very wet. No 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 no. You can and wet as much as you can. If your shadows get dry with you, just do that. Give it a kiss of life to be more <laughs> punch of life. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, and so, uh, in, yep. in this painting, uh, I used the shadows not just for the focus or the or giving the depth. Uh, the main hero in this um, painting is not the balcony. It was the flags. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give the motion, the, the sense of motion, because uh, obviously these flags should be moving. So I can't make them moving, but I can make the shadows a little bit in motion. You know, when the, in the caricature or the cartoon, when we draw the motion uh, yeah. lines, yes, right, something yeah. like that. If you make okay. your, your shadow a little bit hizzy, moving, dancing a little bit, uh, and if it didn't dance, skip some water on it. Don't worry, it will not get to you. <laughs> Try to think of yourself when you are painting. I am Leonardo da Vinci. I'm the greatest artist on earth. And if you failed to achieve what you want, don't be hard on yourself. You are not Leonardo da Vinci. You don't have to make <laughs> Try experiments, yes. Try. Yeah, I think that's very important that we shouldn't be precious about our work so that we, you know, we, we're bold, we try. I mean, if it doesn't work, try again, right? There's no harm. Uh, exactly. You try to be passionate to, uh, to work, to, uh, try to love yourself when you are working. As Jane said, invest in yourself. No. Here, love yourself when you are working. Uh, uh, that's the problem, Yanni. Uh, sometimes when you feel low, mm -hmm. you, you don't achieve anything in, in your painting uh, at all. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that, that's so true. You and go with the flow, make the water <laughs> make the most of the work. If you find water hot, add water. It's not called watercolor for nothing. It's water first, <laughs> then color. <laughs> really I love enjoyed that. Trying this interview uh, because you uh, interviewed Jane at the beginning. We have so different styles. She focused on pigment, on colors, and I focus on the medium, the water itself. The water. <laughs> the water. <laughs> the vehicle. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's perfect. And that's a fantastic way to wrap up the segment. Can you? Just very quickly show your tools because some people are curious about what size brush you use and all that. Okay. Um, I use this okay. one. Uh -huh. One. This mm -hmm. is the size because the number is different from brand to brand, as you know. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. that usually I use this one. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a mix between uh, sable and um, synthetic. It's, mm -hmm. it's not uh, pure as uh, pure sable. Pure sable. Uh, right. No, no, not pure sable. I, uh, usually okay, I yes. don't use pure sable because I need this step. This is the mm -hmm. one I use most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. After mm -hmm. that, I use this one, it's mm -hmm. quite large, and my largest one. Wow. The, wow, very, okay. This is the biggest one by the Venshi. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. And yep. uh, uh, also, I need to use... Um, uh, a synthetic one. This is from Skoda uh, because it's it got very sharp tip for details. Details. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and um, use Lamy and <laughs> a pen. A nip pen. Nip pen. Okay. 
in, oh. uh, in outdoor because Nepen gave you the variety you need, if you uh, freedom, you need to uh, draw different thickness. Mm -hmm. Because with, with the, uh, when you press it, you can create thick one or thin one, whatever you want by moving Line your variation. hand. variation. practice at the, at the beginning because it's literally for uh, calligraphy, in fact, mm -hmm. not for drawing, but uh, I love to use it. Mm -hmm. And do you use a waterproof ink or water soluble? Yes, waterproof ink, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, fantastic. You've given so much, uh, so much to work with. I think, uh, well, we've, we've already like way crossed over an hour. We have to wrap the show up, but thank you so much for being on the show, Rihan. Yeah. And uh, you've been an inspiration, a joyful inspiration. Thank you. Um, and I'm sure that our audience is going to have fun with your challenge. Um, I, and I look forward to seeing you again and having okay. a chat. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you, Rihan. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Let's see. Right. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Excuse me. Hit the wrong button and the camera flipped. So you just had a quick look at my living room. <laughs> so thank you all for being on the show. Um, the, I hope you've had fun with that and learned a lot about watercolor. Again, this is this is the Instagram handle of Jane and Riham Ali. Oops, I, that's uh, I just realized there's a typo there. So it's Riham M Ali. Um, go check that out. Um, ask them questions. I, I'm sure that you guys will have you will all have fun participating and trying out those challenges. Here, remember to tag USK Talks Challenge. And oh, I don't know why that's not coming up clearly, but go check out our guests, check them out on Instagram. And I am so sorry, I don't know why the camera is flipping all the time. Okay, have fun with it. And I hope you guys have a great week ahead. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you for joining USK Talks. I would again like to give a huge shout out to the USK Talks team because they are amazing people. And again, we couldn't do this without all that help. Thank you all. Chantal, hi. Hey, hi, thanks for joining us all the way from Australia. Kay Moore, Olivia, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you for sticking around with us and we'll see you next week.